Hi, I'm Greg Hyland, and welcome to my weekly video blog, Critical Tips. This week, the question that we'll address is, how clean is your critical environment? And we're going to answer this question by first talking about the clean room classification systems, and then the measurement tool that you need to get an adequate particle count within your clean room environment. So, clean room classification standards started with what we'll call the English system. The English system is the original system. Now, a more common system is the ISO system. The clean room classification systems are basically built around the concept of one cubic foot of air. One cubic foot of air is the sampling size, and then what we're going to do is look at the size particle within that one cubic foot of air sampling size. That's going to give us what our clean room classification is. So if we look at this illustration here, you can see along this side, I have the English standard. In a clean room class one, you can see there are going to be fewer than three particles greater than a half a micron. The, the, the classification set I like to focus on is class 100. Within the class 100 classification, the most common particle count measurement size is half a micron. And at half a micron, you can see we can accept no more than 100 particles in that one cubic foot. Thus the name class 100. What, we're, what we mean when we say class 100 is there's going to be no more than 100 particles greater than a half a micron within that cubic foot of air. The class 100 English SAS system correlates to the ISO number 5 system. So now that we've established within a class 100 clean room, we can have no greater than 100 particles more, less than a half a micron. How are we going to determine that? Because a half a micron particle size is not detectable to the naked eye. So the measurement tool, and measurement tools have greatly advanced in the last five to 10 years, is a device called an APC. And this is a, a fairly new and innovative APC, or air particle counter. The first feature I like to point out is the sampling cone. This cone is of a specific dimension and shape. Then within the device, there is a vacuum that draws in the sample, and then in the back, there is a laser. So the air sample is drawn across the laser, and then the laser counts the number of particles of the particle size. Whenever you're using an, an air particle counter, it's very important that you examine the calibration date. As you can see, this unit was calibrated on 421 of this year. Calibrations for air particle counters are only good for 12 months. Because this is a very sensitive instrument, it needs to be recalibrated every 12 months. So how you turn the unit on, is you basically just push the start button. And you can see, I don't know if you can hear, the vacuum. And what this unit is doing is it's in wait mode. And as you can see, this is a what we call a three-channel particle counter. So this particle counter is counting particles that are 0.3 micron, 0.5 micron, and 5 micron. In the wait mode, it's ready. Now if we press the run button, you can see this unit is programmed to do a one minute sample and as it's pulling the air across the laser you can see that it's beginning to display the number of particles. Now I'm not going to take this for the whole minute because we're not actually in a clean room. I'm going to turn it off. So if you look at the number of particles less than a half a micron you can see that we have 2,241 particles less than half a micron. Well if we look at to our classification standard we can only have up to a hundred. So clearly, this office environment is not a clean room environment. It has way too many particles. So the proper way to use an air particle counter is first you need to be donned in the appropriate tire. You need to wipe down your particle counter. You need to take it into your clean room. And then you need to do a particle count typically in three sets. The first set is what we call at rest. When the HEPA filters are on and there are no process tools going on, that's an at rest state. Do particle counts in a random manner across the clean room. Then you do a particle count when the clean room HEPA filters are on and the process equipment is on. That's your second particle count. And then your third particle count is your HEPA filters are on, your process filtration is on, and your operators are within your clean room environment. This helps you isolate sources of potential contamination in your clean room. So let me just summarize. How clean is your critical environment? The first thing you need to establish is which standard system are you going to use. Are you going to use the English system or the metric system? Then once you've established the classification, you need to determine what level you need to be at. 
And then after you've determined what level you need to be at, you need to have the appropriate measurement tool and you need to take that tool and do three specific counts in your clean room to determine what classification your clean room is. Clean room classification readings are going to vary based upon many variables. That's why it's important that you have a very rigorous and accountable procedure around the frequency of your particle counts. So hopefully I begin to start answering the question of how clean is your clean room. Thank you.